In this episode, I will show you how to migrate your... Your... Hang on. Testing one, two, three. We don't have subtitles. Why? We need to fix this. So we just learned that we don't have any subtitles. Let's see how we could use Google Cloud Machine Learning APIs to generate subtitles for this video. The first thing we could do is pull back from the full screen player. We are here in the video editor now, feels kind of good. And then we can export the dialogue of me talking as a sound file and process that. So the first thing we can do is click on the export button, select export file, and then we don't really need video, just the audio. So go to settings, change the destination to audio only, and the format to WAV, so that we get the original uncompressed high quality audio. Then click next. We can select desktop as our destination for the file and click save. Now the video editor is rendering and outputting just the dialogue of this video as a file on our computer. Now we need to enable the services we want to use. But before that, let's create a service account. A service account is used for programmatic access from your code to the services you're calling. We give it a name and a description. This will be used for developer access to ML APIs. And therefore, let's assign a specific role ML Engine Developer to this service account. Then we also want to create a key in JSON format. This will be downloaded to our machine and we will then use it later from our Python code to actually communicate with the services. Then we go to the API library, look for speech to text API, and we enable that one. We need to enable billing, but please take note that this service has a free tier. Now the API is enabled. We still need to find the second service we want to use, which is the translation API. We click that, enable it, enable billing, and this service also has a free tier. Now our APIs are active. We go back to IAM, and then we need to add one more role to our ML developer service account. We assign the project viewer role to this account. Now we are ready to do a bit of coding. To start using the ML APIs, let's first load some useful libraries. We need the time library for handling timestamps in subtitles and we need the Google Cloud Speech API client library. We create a Python client for the Speech API for communicating with the service. After that, we specify the audio encoding. The recommendation is to use Linear 16, or in other words, PCM WAV files that are 16 bits and have a sample rate of 16 kHz. Then we specify a configuration for the Speech API. We will ask the service to enable word time offsets. This gives us the beginning and ending timestamps for each spoken sentence. We will use these timestamps for each line in the subtitles file to tell the player when it should display the subtitle. Next, we specify the Google Cloud Storage URI for the audio file to be transcribed. And since the audio files can be quite long, I recommend using the asynchronous method. It means that we use the speech client to start a transcribing operation and then we wait for it to finish. Once the operation finishes, we can then iterate through a list of results. We are most interested in the most likely translation for each sentence, so let's just use the first alternative at index 0. Next, we need to know the accurate timing of our subtitle. I've split the subtitles by sentences, so what we want to know is what is the beginning timestamp of the first word in the sentence and what is the ending timestamp of the last word in the sentence. That time period is the overall duration of the subtitle entry. And then we iterate through all the sentences in the same way. Each sentence becomes one subtitle entry. I'm also creating two output lists. One is formatted in the SRT format with the timestamps and the other list as plain text. And then we return both lists. After this, we simply write those two lists as two output files. One formatted in the SRT format and the other one formatted as plain text. Okay. Let's start using the code. Here we have the Python files, and in the requirements.txt we can see that we are going to be importing the Google Cloud Speech API, Translation API, and the SRT subtitle modules. Next, what we want to have is an audio file to transcribe from speech to text. So we find the file that we exported from our video editor, and we copy it here to this directory, 
And then we can use, for example, a tool called SOXI or SOXI <laughs> to check what is the current file format. We can see that the original file is 24 bits, two channels and 48 kilohertz. This is too much for the speech API. So what we can do is convert it with the SOX tool to 16 bits, 16 kilohertz and one channel, which is mono. And then we can check this new file and we can verify that indeed it's mono, 16 kilohertz and 16 bits. Next, we need to copy this file to Google Cloud Storage. I have created a bucket called SRT in, which will be the input files for the speech API. And now let's try to execute the Python code. You can see here that the Python code is pointing at that file in Google Cloud Storage. Now the service is loading the file. It's transcribing it from speech to text. And pretty soon we should get a response. All right, we have finished transcribing and our Python client has written two output files. One formatted as a plain text file and the other one formatted as an SRT subtitle file. And notice here in the SRT format that there's an index number, start and stop timing for each sentence and then the sentence body text. To translate the subtitles to other languages, we need to use the Google Cloud Translation API. We create a translation service client and to find out what languages are supported, we can first call the get supported languages method. And then we can iterate through the response languages and print them on the screen for our reference. To translate our subtitles to multiple target languages, we can use the batch translate method. You have to store the source text in a cloud storage bucket and specify an empty destination bucket where the service will store the translated output files. It's an asynchronous operation, so we will wait for the response. The response contains only the operation's metadata and the actual translations are stored in the output bucket. Let's now try to translate our subtitles. So we have this English language text file that we got from the speech to text API. So let's copy that to the GCS bucket. And then what we can do is use our translation Python client to try to translate this English text file to Korean and Hindi. And now we are waiting for the asynchronous operation to complete. Let's now check the status in our output bucket. So now we can see that we have an index file which should contain information on the files that it has output and then two output files, one for Hindi, one for Korean. Let's copy those files here and let's investigate. So here in the index.csv file that the service has generated, we can see that on the left side is the original file it translated, then the target language is Hindi and Korean, and then their respective output files that we have here. Finally, we need to format the plain text translated subtitles to the subrip SRT format. We will use our original English language subtitle as the reference. It contains the timing information for all the subtitles or sentences. So I will first open the English subtitle file and parse it with the SRT module. This gives us a list which contains each of the subtitles with their index number, start and stop timing and the subtitles body text. Then what we do next is to open the translated files, in this case the Korean and Hindi text files, and create a new SRT subtitle for them. It's just a matter of replacing the English language body text for each subtitle element with the corresponding Korean or Hindi text for the same index. And after this, we just write the Korean and Hindi subtitle elements as their own SRT files. We can do that quickly by loading the English subtitle file with the timing information and then using the index CSV file generated by the service that lists those two Hindi and Korean text files. We execute that and now we should have a Hindi subtitle file and a Korean subtitles file. Let's take a look at the Hindi file. Looks good. And if we check the Korean subtitles file, same thing. We have a nice index, the same timing, and then the body text is in Korean. Now that we have generated our Hindi and Korean subtitles, we need to have them reviewed, just in case. So this is a good time to ask your friends and colleagues for a bit of help. Hey Anand, can you help me check this? After you have successfully reviewed the translations, it's now time to upload the SRT subtitles to this video. Let's do that in YouTube Studio. Click on More Options, find the Subtitles menu, 
and then click Add Language. So for example, we have Korean subtitles. So let's select Korean and click Add. So now we need to upload the Korean SRT subtitle file that we generated with our Python code. We find the file on our computer. We select the Korean SRT subtitle file. We open it and we upload it to YouTube Studio. And if everything goes well, in here in YouTube Studio, we can see that yes, we have Korean subtitles and the timing looks okay. Click Save Changes and then you can click Return back to YouTube Studio. And now let's refresh the page of subtitles and make sure that indeed we have published our Korean subtitles. Okay, now it's time for the big test. Let's try to re-enable subtitles. Go to Settings, Subtitles, there, hey, there they are. Let's select Korean. Testing one, two, three. Good evening. Okay. So we managed to use Google Cloud Machine Learning APIs to first generate subtitles of this dialog, then translate those subtitles to other language subtitles, and then upload them back to this video. I really hope that you like this content. If you do, click the like button, click subscribe, and see you next time. Bye bye.